Um, Megan Hedge, was it difficult to transition from a member of a five-piece band to a solo artist? <clears throat> um, I mean, it's hard to say, really. I was very excited to do it, and I think I was ready to do it. I love working with the girls, but at that point, things were, were quite difficult um, <clears throat> together. We'd had so much time together, I think we needed some time apart. And I really, you know, I wanted to express myself as an individual, and this was the perfect opportunity to do it. So, um, so yeah, I was just so up for it. I was so up for a new challenge, you know, totally being myself 100%, singing about the things I wanted to sing about just as an individual and not part of a collective. So I really embraced that change. And now it's interesting because I do get to do both occasionally, um, that I just feel really lucky to do them both because they're both very different. And I don't prefer one or the other. I love them both equally. Uh, but they both give me such different things. It's amazing. Rita Dunn. Who came up with the idea of having Lisa left Lefty Lopez on Never Be The Same Again? Also, did she write her rap or just perform it? Well, I love TLC. Myself and the Spice Girls, we always love TLC. We kind of, they inspired us a lot in the early days. And Lisa was my fave. I was in the studio with a guy called Rhett Lawrence. I was in LA in the sessions for Northern Star. And people might have heard me tell this story. But never be the same again. We'd, so we'd, we'd written the song and we just got to the middle eight where the rap is. And, you know, often the middle eight is the part of the song where, I mean, in pop music now, you're hearing less and less middle eights, actually. It's becoming a bit of a fashion to not have one. But it's a bit where musically there's just a bit on its own which is like completely different to the to the verses and the chorus. It's like it's a little standalone piece, kind of, you know, three quarters of the way in. And we got to that bit. You usually write that bit last. And we got to that bit and I just said to Rhett, I can just hear a Lisa Left Eye style rap. Like, you know, the way she had such a unique style and, and the, the rhythms that she used. And... I, I never thought I'd have rap on my on my album. Um, you know, I love so many genres of music, but I just didn't think. I mean, I'm, I am a bit of a frustrated rapper. Some of you might know that about me, um, but I, I just didn't think I, I would have it on the record. And then he'd actually worked with TLC, so obviously he had contact of the management and everything. And she was like, "Yeah, you know, she loved the song. Was up for it." And she recorded the rap, and there, there was a few people that wrote the rap. Actually, Lisa was one of the writers, but she had a little team that they wrote it together, and it's a brilliant rap, and it really works with the song, isn't it? It's perfect, the context is, is just so brilliant. So it was a magical moment. It felt like the whole of that album, Northern Star, just felt so magical, like it was just meant to be. It was just the most wonderful experience, and I'm very proud I got to, to work with her. She would look at some stuff like... Hi, you're looking amazing, thank you so much. Ah, uh, what is your most underrated song? That's a good question. I think I think most of my songs are underrated. Do you know, I've, the, it's, got, it's Shut Up who, who asked that question. Oh, there you go, uh, oh, oh, Morgan, somebody, I think. Um, I do, I think my, my music's really underrated. Um, a lot of it, <laughs> but I am gonna say that, aren't I? Um, I mean, especially listening back to it today, I'm like, I'm good. Okay. What, oh Lisa, again we talk about Lisa, do we have a favourite memory? So what was it like working with Lisa Lefty Lopez, I'll never be the same again for another star, do you have a favourite memory with her? Um, well we hung out a few times, I wasn't in the studio when she did the rap actually, I, I, I don't know, I must have been back in the UK at that time, uh, but it was sent to me and I loved it immediately, but we hung out in LA, um, um, just to, to get to know each other a little bit, we shot the video together obviously, um, one of my favourite moments would be learning the dance, in, in fact, Never Be The Same Again is a brilliant video, isn't it? Did you, do you know, I love giving these like little facts that you may or may not know or may not care. Um, but so the video for Never Be The Same Again was shot by the same director that shot Crimea River for Justin Timberlake. And if you watch it, you, you can kind of see because like I think it's the grading and the colouring is quite similar. Um, I think he also did a big jailer while I'm waiting for tonight or one of those. Um, oh God, his name's gone out of my head now. Well, he's an amazing video director. Obviously, he did massive artists. Um, but yeah, doing the video was really fun because that's when we really got to, you know, to, to work properly together. She came to the UK as well and we did some promo. I think we did Top of the Pops. We did some MTV stuff. So it was just amazing just getting to know her a bit and to work with her because she was amazing. She was like a force of nature. And yeah, it was, it was such a shock when I got the call. I was in Italy 
um, when she passed away, um, she was in a car accident and she was only 30. So that was very, very sad indeed. And whenever I do the song, you know, obviously I always, I always think about her. I did it at the Mighty Hoopla a few years back and TLC were headlining that gig. And it was the first time I've met T-Bars and Chili. And I was so excited to meet them. And, and I just burst out crying when I met him because it just made me think of Lisa. Anyway, I'm getting emotional. No. Okay. Whew. Marley.